So for 16 years, we have been living with this medicine cabinet from, I don't know, the 1920s with these fluorescent bulbs on the side that mm, this one here doesn't even work anymore. I think it's time for a change. Let's see what we can do about this. So you guys got to hear this. Listen to the sound of the opening of my medicine cabinet. Oh gosh, it's so creepy. Well, we are not big medicine takers. We just don't have a lot of issues like that. So I'm going to empty out this medicine cabinet and store these kind of cold supplies somewhere else. And as you can see, this thing is horrible. I mean, it is rusted. It's just gross. Over the years, I've tried cleaning it and painting it, but it's just no use anymore. It's old. It's got to go. It's recessed into the wall, so I'm going to have to find, after I empty it out, I'm going to have to find the screws so that I can, okay, there's one there. This looks like a flathead. There's another one up here that's already halfway hanging out of the wall. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to get this thing out of the wall. Obviously, I'm going to have to do a drywall repair, but since the light fixture is tied in with the medicine cabinet, I am also going to have to be careful, shut the power off, and do something with the electricity so that I can uh, hang up a new vanity light up top. Yeah. And since the wall will already be open, this should be an easy job because then I can just take the wiring from the new light, connect it with the wiring that was inside the wall for the medicine cabinet, and then I can do my drywall repair. Oh boy, this is going to be a big job. We'll see if I can get this done or if I might need to call a professional. Okay, so far I was able to get all of the screws out. There's only four screws except for this last one here, which apparently is stripped. There's always one, right? Let me see what I can do about this. Oh, look at that, guys. We're making progress. I can almost get it out of the wall now. Okay, it is out of the wall. We got a couple of wires there. The power's already shut off, so no worries. Uh, I'm safe. And here is that nasty old medicine cabinet. And my husband is gonna take this out for us. Okay, instructions. Please turn off power to the outlet and review instructions before installation. The installation must be handled by a qualified licensed electrician. Okay, uh-oh. needed to drill a hole just enough for the wires to go through. We didn't have to make a really big hole, which is good. Drywall anchors are in. Now we're ready to put the face plate to the wall. Everything is level. Okay, so we're getting ready to attach the face plate of the light fixture and the wiring is all set in place. We have the black goes to the black, the white goes to the white, and the copper goes to the green ground screw. And we have some orange caps that we will put on top of those wires to make sure that everything is safe inside the walls. We push these wires back through the hole. 
This vanity light is from Amazon. I chose this finish to match the rest of the fixtures that we've installed little by little over time. This style makes it easy to change the bulbs because they're facing downward and I don't even need a step ladder. I made sure to get something with a pure white shade and not a yellow or a cream shade so that the lighting would be very bright and not soft dim lighting. Don't forget to press the thumbs up button and subscribe. Okay, I just flipped the breaker and turned the power back on. Now we got to test out our new light fixture. Let's flip the switch. All right. Nice and bright in here. Brighter than it ever has been in 16 years, as a matter of fact. So this is great. We did it. It's safe and I'm happy. And here is the new mirror, also from Amazon. It fits this small space perfectly and I love that rich chocolate color. We centered the mirror with the sink instead of the light because of the electrical socket. There's also a large pipe behind this wall that we had to be careful not to puncture when drilling. The mirror is not that heavy but we still mounted it to the studs anyway, just to be safe. The bottom of the mirror has hooks that you can hang washcloths or maybe a soap on a rope, but I won't be using those. I do, however, like this shelf so that my husband has a place to rest his razor while shaving. It can also be for something decorative, like a small candle or succulent. And just for a different look, I took down the white curtains that were hanging here and decided to use a bamboo shade that would fit more into the theme of this spa bathroom. Now this part is my favorite tip. By raising the curtain rod close to the ceiling, it makes the room feel so much taller. It's a simple, inexpensive change with a huge impact on the way it makes this small space feel. The print on this 84 inch shower curtain makes a statement by becoming the artwork of the bathroom and tying in with the spa theme. The shower liner is also 84 inches long, both purchased from Amazon. When I installed the ceramic floor, I inlaid these little stones around the tub and commode. Notice how the curved line of the vanity light mimics the curved shower rod. These design choices are intentional to make everything cohesive and give you the feeling of more space in a small space. From this vantage point, you can see just how narrow it is, but it's clean, bright, functional, practical, and pretty. And I hope you got some ideas for your small bathroom too. Don't forget to press the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and come back next week for more videos on event planning, decorating, and lifestyle. I'm Steph Storm and you'll see me next time.